is going on eaters and feeders welcome to the event rockstar series where i teach you how to shine like the rockstar you are at events demos lunch and learns parties and shindigs that your meal prep business attends so you can maximize your impact and your profit for your efforts in this episode i'm going to be covering the event kit now this is the heart of this entire operation the event kit is a bunch of secret weapons it's a cache of secret weapons that i have added to and amassed and optimized over years and countless iterations, going to events, demos, grand openings, health fairs, and all sorts of other engagements. And I am going to be doing a brain dump in this episode and all the subsequent series so you can benefit from all of the experience that I've had, all the mistakes I've made, and all the successes that I've learned to consistently achieve. So I hope you are buckled up and ready with your pen and notepad because I'm going to be going over some high quality stuff. Now, in this episode, I'm going to be telling you a lot about what I use and a little bit about how I use it, but I sincerely suggest that you look into getting your hands on access to the rest of the event rockstar series because really having this stuff is going to be useful but knowing how to most effectively implement it and use it and all the other ancillary topics that I discuss in the event rockstar series are really going to help you make the most out of all of your efforts as I said before it's a lot like putting a rifle in the hands of an average citizen versus putting a rifle in the hands of a marine I will bring you through that Paris Island marine boot camp so you can be a sharpshooter on the other end of this series and and get the most bang for your buck, pun intended, for your efforts so you're able to optimize those opportunities that we're going to be learning to capitalize on. All right, let's dive right into it. First, we're going to be going over some discussion points, and then I will be going over some specific items that we use, and I've included the links to these items in the show notes below, and I would deeply appreciate it if you use those links. I get some kind of little referral kickback from Amazon, not really sure what I get, but it would help support my channel, and I would be deeply, deeply, deeply appreciative of it. Also, you're going to want to make sure that you have a checklist. Now, I provide a checklist through the member section, but you could also make your own. I highly suggest that you make sure you have a checklist when you have your event kit so that you are able to tell when it is fully stocked, when it is fully packed, and when it is ready to go, and when you need to buy more, restock, or reload the stuff that you are missing. Now, that checklist is going to be crucial for the day before the event because that's when I suggest you make sure that everything is packed, cleaned, ready, prepped, fueled, whatever you need it for. You need to make sure that it is ready to go the night before so you're not scrambling the same day of the event looking for stuff that you forgot to put in there. Or even worse, showing up to an event to find out that you don't have some of the stuff that you need. So again, the checklist itself is going to be the backbone of your entire event kit because that will give you an idea as to what's there, what's not, what you need to get, and what you are good to go with. The next crucial thing you're going to want to make sure that you have, and this is also going to be pretty easy for you to put together, but I also provide it in the member section if you need it, is a contact form or a lead form. Now, there's two different ways to go about doing it that I will discuss in this series, but you want to make sure that you have some way to collect the contact information for the people you're engaging with at these events. That's the whole purpose of these events, right? You can't be expecting them to go and look you up and make a purchase that's going to be nowhere near as effective at converting them as would be collecting their cell phone, their email, their basic contact information so you can follow up with them later, right? Now, I may have a link popping up or there will be links below or you can just search on my channel for the keywords Google Forms and or Zapier because those are two videos that I did together many many months ago and they teach you how to create your own capture form using Google Forms and I've got links for you to sign up for that stuff as well it gives you some discounts but I suggest you check out those videos first so you have an idea of what I'm talking about when I discuss creating a digital intake form and the benefits of it. A quick summary of it is if you have the digital forms, you can actually set it up and I show you how with those two videos, the Google Forms video and the Zapier video. It shows you how to get contacts and this is just one of the ways that you can use Google Forms. I go over a bunch of other ones, but it shows you how you can have your contact information fed directly into your CRM in real time. So theoretically, if you have a sales team waiting back at the office, they could be hitting these contacts up immediately while they are still hot and still very interested in your product. They might still have the taste of your food in their mouth and hopefully still glowing from the interaction that they had with you or your promo staff at the event, which is obviously the ideal time to be following up with them to get them onto your program. Now, the digital intake form is ideal. I can't stress that enough. However, something is better than nothing. So if you're not comfortable with doing that yet, then I strongly suggest printing out some contact forms, having plenty of copies and using them with the clipboards that I'm going to be discussing later and showing you because it will be worth nothing if you do these events give out a bunch of free food put your time into it and you don't get contact information for people you can follow up with later it sounds common sense at least to me but i can't tell you how many times i've been to events and i've seen other companies have no contact intake form and they just give out flyers that's a waste you're, you're wasting money and time showing up giving away free product 
hiring someone to be there, wasting your own time being there, giving away printouts and forms and everything else. You don't need that. You need to get their contact information because you are targeting the busiest people in your area. They don't have time and they don't have the bandwidth to follow up with you to give you their money. You're going to have to hunt them down. And without a contact form or some kind of intake method, you don't really have a whole lot of opportunity to follow up with them now, do you? A lot of these links that I'm providing are for specific products that we've either found to have a lot of success with or we've and or we've had some failures with similar products in the past. So I'm suggesting these specific products because there are some similar products out there that, like I said, we've had some issues with, they don't work. So if it's on this list, don't think that it's limited. Don't think that the event kit is limited to just these things. There's plenty of other things and you'll see my complete list in the member section, but these things specifically, there are other versions in some cases that we've tried before and they completely suck. The rest of them, if we haven't tried something else, that means that they worked on the first time and they're just the best bang for the buck that we were able to find. And these are the specific items that we buy and I highly recommend. Now, while these products Products aren't in any specific order I have saved the best for last and it's a secret weapon that I've seen so much success with and I can't wait to get into it if you look at some of the pictures we've taken at demos I will actually remove this from the line of vision I'll hide it under the table just because I don't want our competition knowing about it because it's something that's been so effective so you are getting a truly powerful prize just through this video so you can only imagine the other stuff that I get into in other videos and again teaching you how to effectively implement these things even though they are powerful by themselves when you know how to use them the right way, which I teach you in the other videos, you will really be able to maximize the benefit of implementing all of these things in one all-encompassing strategy. All right, so let's start off and get right into the first product. We've got the folding cart. Now, this thing is ingenious because not only is it super useful, you don't want to have to be lugging up all these products, uh, up elevators, and you know sometimes we have to park down the street, go back and forth. In South Florida, that's especially a painful thing to do, to be going in and out, in and out, in and out, uh, just to make all these extra trips. So this allows you to make fewer trips. It also, when you're carrying food, it prevents it from spilling. Sometimes I'll use this to carry the water, the shafers full of water if I'm using shafers that day. And this is just worth its weight in gold. Now these things are super affordable. They do have other carts that I've had my eye on, but they're several hundred bucks. I think they're just shy of 300 bucks. The big difference is they fold lengthwise. This one folds like widthwise right down the middle. Not a huge difference. The other ones look like they're uh, a higher quality maybe, but it's basically three times the price. So for this one, you know, you guys know me, I, I like the most effective bang for the buck and this is definitely it. I can't tell you how many of these we've had. We've probably bought maybe six of them over the years. The kitchen has stolen about three of them. So I still have about three of them. I have to keep on buying them because once the kitchen gets their hands on them, they get all sorts of food and cuts and all sorts of other damage and weird stuff happen to them. So I like to have my own set. And right now, like I said, I have about three of them. Normally you only need one per event. It's nice to go with two, but having one will still set you ahead leaps and bounds. Now at the event, it's great because it could either fold up and be out of sight, out of mind under the table. They store very easily in crevices and closets and cupboards, wherever you want to put it. But also what's nice is at the event, it's more surface area. So if you have limited space on the table, and this is ni a nice place to have some of your backup materials or another tray of food that's ready to go and still easily accessible without having to tuck everything under your table. I can't speak highly enough for this. Really, you, you won't appreciate it until you've done a few demos and you've had to lug catering bags and tens of pounds of food and materials and all sorts of other stuff back and forth. Again, especially in the South Florida heat. So this thing is definitely worth its weight in gold. Moving right along to the next item. This is another cart that we've used. I like this one because while it doesn't stack and have all of the levels of shelving that the first one does. This one's great when you have a big case of something, a big bulk case of stuff. And as you can see, it behaves as a cart. So you could set it up as a cart and then you could also use it as a dolly. Honestly, for events, really haven't used it too much as a dolly or hand cart too much. Um, using it like this, we definitely have done many, many uh, trips back and forth in this configuration. Again, I like the fact that it folds away. It folds in, in basically half the size and goes in flat. And actually in our truck, this goes under the bench in the back, which I wouldn't be able to do if it was a regular hand cart, let alone one of the normal carts that we have in the kitchen that don't fold at all. If you had to pick between the two, I would go with the first cart. But if you have the budget for both, this is definitely nice to have in your arsenal. And this is something that the kitchen will also use quite often because as a hand cart or dolly, whatever you call it, wherever you are, I know everyone has different colloquialisms for what they call this configuration. I like to call it a dolly, but in this configuration, it's very useful for the kitchen when they're moving around, you know, like 10 boxes of chicken or something like that. Instead of making 10 trips, you can load them up and move it around like this, or even like this. I see them in the kitchen normally using it like this. And again, this configuration I use quite frequently for the events when I use it. For 70 bucks, you really can't beat it. It's a pretty versatile and compactable piece of equipment that I am truly in love with. 
How would you like an employee who works for pennies per hour, works 24 hours a day, works seven days a week, never gets sick, doesn't even take a lunch break? No, I'm not talking about violating labor laws. I'm talking about chatbots. Before you spend another dime on marketing, let me show you how I can increase sales, improve customer service, boost retention, and most importantly, grow your profit with a chatbot that I designed specifically for meal prep businesses. Best of all, it's a fraction of what you'd expect to spend on a marketing campaign, and it'll make that campaign way more effective and way more profitable. Click the link or visit mealprepbiz101.com to learn why this chatbot will be the most valuable and best bang for the buck weapon you have in your business's entire arsenal. Moving right along, we've got a folding table. What event kit is complete without a folding table, none of them. I would suggest having at least two of these. You're probably only going to be bringing one to each event, but you never know. It is sometimes nice to have two tables depending on how big the event is, how many people are going to be there, how much space you have. A lot of times my favorite configuration would be having one table between myself, our staff, and the customers or testees, the people attending the event, and then having another one behind us, and that's where I would store any of the food or other materials that I would just turn around and grab. Sometimes I've set it up in an L configuration, but honestly, nine times out of 10, I'd just be going with one table. It's just nice to have a second one in case you need it, especially if there might be opportunities that are going to be on the same day and you need to send out one kit somewhere and another kit another place. Always ask if they are providing a table when you go to these events and then ask for the dimensions because sometimes they'll provide a table but it's going to be a small table and with this kind of business it's nice to have a couple of trays of food laid out sometimes plus your promo material and plus some of the other things that i'm going to be discussing later on in this video so again having this table this is a nice six foot table gives you a good amount of room you'll still have your backup stuff hidden somewhere else you don't want to have everything out on the table at one time but this is normally a pretty adequate table and the size is still easy enough to move around with the most i would go with is maybe an eight foot table but if you're dealing with promo team members who might not have the guns to be moving around heavier pieces of equipment this could get a bit cumbersome especially anything that gets a little bit bigger than this so this is a nice size has a nice amount of you know surface space a nice amount of real estate for you to be displaying all of your stuff on having food laid out all that other stuff and it's still going to be something that's going to be easy, easily fit into the back of you know a jetta let alone you know we use a, a nice big sierra truck so it makes it a lot easier but you have to keep in mind whatever your vehicle is that it's going to be transporting you there it has to be something that's going to be fitting inside that vehicle pretty easily and this can even go in the backseat of a jetta even if you don't have room in the trunk now we're moving on to clipboards it's nice to have a, a decent amount of clipboards because when you have a bunch of people rushing up to the table you don't want there to have to be a line forming around clipboard access if you've got one clipboard people are going to be waiting for that person to slowly write things out and a lot of times they're just going to grab some food and be like oh the clipboard's busy i'm just going to walk off and you just gave them food you really want to be capturing their contact information so you want to get rid of any excuses for them to not be giving you their information having multiple clipboards ready to go all with some sheets ready to be filled out and pens which we're going to be getting into next you will be able to lower the risk of people just grabbing and going with the meal and not giving you any other contact information normally we have about three clipboards set up at any period of time one in the middle one at each end and that way there's never an excuse for someone to not have a clipboard you might want to have more than that three normally be, tends to be the, the most that we need normally if even if there are uh, you know people mobbing the table you're still able to get people cycling through those three clipboards pretty easily and effectively without taking up too much time and moving right along, pens, and particularly these chain pens. I like these. You can get six, and uh, you get a pack of six uh, through this link, which is going to be below. It also comes in 14. I think we normally buy it by six, and that sets us up for two kits. So each kit will have you know, three pens. We'll also have some backup pens just in case these things run out of ink. But what's beautiful about this is people don't walk off with your pens. Why? Because the other end of that chain is going to be adhered to your clipboards. See where I'm going with this? Trust me, I've gone to events where we've run out of pens because they start disappearing and we didn't show up with enough. And that's just a bad place to be in. So this keeps people from walking off, at least walking too far with your pens, keeps them adhered to the clipboard. So you don't have to look around and you don't have people holding the clipboard and like, oh, where's the pen? Oh, it rolled under this tray of food or wherever else. Yeah, just follow the chain. You've got a pen. No problem. Are you looking for an ordering system that will automate the menial but crucial tasks to help your meal prep grow and to help you capture more profit? Then head on over to mealprepbiz101.com to learn more about the most advanced piece of software that this industry has ever seen. It can seamlessly integrate with your existing website or provide a turnkey e-commerce solution if you don't already have one. Automate everything from taking orders to marketing to customer service and it's all under one roof. You can literally be live within a day and avoid all of the time, the headache, and the expense associated with other solutions. The best part is there's no monthly subscription and there's no annual fee. To learn more, head on over to MealPrepBiz101.com. 
now let's get into display material. If you are going to be giving out business cards and postcards or any kind of flyers, having them in a stack really doesn't look too professional. It's also very easy for them to get bumped and make a mess and then you have to pick them up. And when it comes to these events, I am so sensitive to anything that could be a potential mess that you have to clean up or any kind of a waste of time or distraction. You want to be there to sell, to engage, to have conversations with people. And if you're wasting your time picking up cards that fell over the table because somebody bumped them or something else, plus the aesthetics alone, it's, it's significantly more professional looking to have these set up in a display display holder, it's easier to see, they don't get lost on the other side of a tray of food or something like that. They're set up nicely, nice display, harder to knock over, and like I said, the entire presentation is improved by having these. Normally, we'll have about two or three of these set up on the table. Now, I'm not a big fan of giving out material unless I've got their contact information, because a lot of times people will just grab a flyer and be like, hey, I'll reach out to you. Even if they have the best interest to reach out to you and they're sincere about it in that moment, odds are they're probably going to be getting distracted with the rest of their day. Whatever they're returning to, unless they reach out and contact you right away, that business card or that flyer is just gonna go into a purse or a desk drawer or something and get lost and they'll look at it in six months and you'll maybe they'll contact you, but in the meantime, you're gonna be missing out on all that opportunity to service them and they're gonna be missing out on your delicious food. So have this stuff available just for the aesthetics of it, but whenever someone grabs for that, try to talk to them about the promotion or whatever incentive that you have for getting them to sign up. Whenever someone reaches for any type of flyer or postcard or business card, I always try to engage them and try to push them, corral them into filling out some contact information on the capture form that we have so that I can follow up with them instead of just having them walk off with a business card that not only did I pay for it, but I also just wasted that opportunity to convert them. It's not going to be as sure of a deal coming to fruition if I don't have their contact information to follow up with, right? Now, these displays are great. We've had them dropped. We've had people step on them. They're pretty simple. They're not too flashy. They're, they fit every brand color because they are clear and it allows you to fully showcase whatever design you have on your business card. And, you know, I, we've been using them for years and it's it's cheap enough to buy a set of six and again I would only have maybe two or three on the table at one time so really six would be enough for two or three demo kits if you have that many events going on simultaneously now similarly we also have these displays for the postcards and if you look here you actually have in the front you're able to put one postcard in and you want to have something that's you know very engaging something that is aesthetically drawing and you have that promo card that postcard set in the front and then as you can see that you that capture you in the back is for holding the other postcards so you'd have one in the front that shows them what they're going to be grabbing and then they'll be able to grab from probably fits i don't know a like hundred and something of them in the back so they can constantly go and just select one it's again a lot more aesthetically pleasing than just having a stack of them and again i already went over the headaches of having them knocked over and just all the disadvantages of having it for 16 bucks for one of them 30 bucks for two of them maybe go and get three of them for 40 bucks, whatever you want to do, have a couple of them. These are a little bit more flimsy. If you do step on these, they will break a lot more easily just because they're, they've are they got a little bit more flex to them than the business cards. Obviously the business cards are pretty tight and compact. So these things are a bit more durable. I have broken about two of these. So I would suggest having some backups and again, you want to see when people are reaching for these, you want to try to convert them to giving you their contact information as well, not just get in the business of handing out free food and free postcards and business cards and flyers because that's not what you're there for, right? I'll go into more detail about tips and tactics and the whole mindset of how to say, what to say, what to do, how to do it in the other videos, but just to give you a brief surface level idea of what's going on, even though I do suggest you have these materials, your objective at these events isn't giving out materials, it's collecting information and keep that in mind. Now let's discuss utensils and napkins. This is a great little holder because one holder holds both items you can if you have stuff that needs forks knives spoons you can have all of that in there as well right in the middle you're able to stuff your napkins what's good about this is when napkins are laying flat they just take up more real estate it's easier for something to spill and get on them when they're in this container it's taking up less real estate really this entire container probably takes up just the amount of space that the napkins alone would be taking up plus you're able to fit in all the other utensils and it also keeps them from getting ruined by having something spill on them it just lowers the opportunity opportunity for those kind of mistakes to happen. Plus it just makes things easier to access. When you're pulling napkins off of a pile, it's hard to get just one. So people end up getting three and then putting it back and it makes a whole mess. You have to rearrange it. With this, it's easier for them to grab one. And same thing with the uh, forks, utensils, whatever you're gonna be having in there, spoons, knives, etc. When they're in a container or a box and people are grabbing for them, it's, it's harder to get one. With this, it's a lot easier for them to just grab one and go. And again, this is all about efficiency, avoiding mistakes, avoiding any kind of fumbling, grabbing two, even though it's seconds, it's imagine a line of impatient people who are looking to get Get through this experience as fast as possible have engaging conversations with you and all these things are going to be hindered by any other disruptions mistakes drops anything else that's slowing down the process so these little 
abilities and opportunities to make things more efficient, I always suggest you capitalize on them. It may seem trivial, but I assure you, spend as much time at events as I have and you'll see that the devil is truly in the details as with many things in this business. I know the meal prep business can be a beast, especially when you're trying to navigate it alone. That's why I created the Meal Prep Mafia, a private group dedicated to other meal prep entrepreneurs who want to learn, share, and grow together. We've got entrepreneurs from a myriad of different backgrounds with a ton of experience and perspectives that you're able to tap into and learn from. I'm sure you've got questions of your own, but sometimes the most valuable question is the one you haven't even thought of yet. Sign up for the monthly membership and access this brain trust of fellow preppreneurs and see that we can cover more ground faster together. I guarantee it's going to be the best investment that you made in yourself and your business so far. Sign up at MealPrepBiz101.com and I will see you in the Mafia. All right, now table covers. What I like about these is they fit to multiple sizes of tables. And what's beautiful about having table covers, especially when you're able to select between, if you notice, there's a myriad of different colors that you can select from uh, so it can match your brand. You can stand out and make you look more professional. A lot of times I've gone to events and they don't have table covers. Ideally, you'll eventually get some branded covers and I'll show you an example of our uh, branded tablecloth that it's got high def pictures on it. It's got all of our contact information, lets you know what's going on as you approach it. But for the price, these things are very easy to obtain and put to use. And at the end of the day, if they get some stains on them or whatever else, they're cheap enough that you can just toss them. What's great about having the table covers, uh, aside from the branding and the aesthetics, helping you stand out and all that other stuff, you're also able to hide material under that table. So when you have extra food or you have your cart or anything else that you don't want to have in eyesight of everyone, you can have it hidden very covertly under the table, but still something that you can easily access. And again, these things fit just about any type of rectangular table. So whether you've got a four foot, an eight foot, six foot would be ideal, but I've had these things stretched to fit all sorts of different sizes of tables, different widths and everything else. They're very adaptable. Now, these fit the tables that I suggested perfectly. So pairing the two, I highly recommend. And again, you're also able to if you want to, if you know you're gonna be using a six foot table, you can buy it specifically for the six footer, but I've also fit a six foot tablecloth on an eight foot table when I had to, and it worked out just fine. Ideally, you'd have them matched up, obviously, your color, the size, the table, and all that other stuff matching, but these things are pretty universal and very adaptable, and for 20 bucks, they're invaluable, and it will help your entire presentation from a distance look way more professional than having the generic black tablecloth that they have. Let's, let's get a, a better idea of what we have as far as colors. These are also extremely effective at helping you pop, helping you stand out, helping the overall brand really make an impression because when you show up to some events and they provide a tablecloth and it's just a regular white or black tablecloth, it's not gonna pop. Imagine walking up and our colors are blue and green, heavy on the blue. So just imagine seeing this blue tablecloth off in the distance and some friendly people behind the table and everybody else just has the same black tablecloth or the same white tablecloth. This one is going to pop. It's gonna draw the eyes, it's gonna help you stand out and it's going to attract more people to your booth. Now let's get into the food. Let's say that you're looking to do samples of some food that's best enjoyed warm or hot, like, I don't know, lasagna. Not gonna be a lot of fun, not gonna be super appealing if you're gonna be serving some cold lasagna, right? Well, obviously not. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're keeping it hot. You wanna make sure that it's staying within that safe temperature range for food to be served at. So I highly suggest this kit. Now, this kit comes with three Schaefer sets. If you're going to be doing multiple demo kits, you might wanna buy two of these because I've normally found that showing up with about three Schaefer sets seems to be what I most often do when I do decide to do warm food for the samplings. This comes with the three. What else is beautiful about it is not only is it all inclusive, it's got everything you need from the Schaefer kits to the Sterno, the Sterno holders, and even the utensils. Side note, it's very important for you to have dedicated utensils that the kitchen isn't going to use that are dedicated specifically for your events. Why? Because if you're using them for events, and the kitchen doesn't get their hands on them, they're going to stay a lot more aesthetically pleasing for a lot longer. The reality is anything that goes into the kitchen gets beat up, it might get bent, it might get chipped, it might get who knows what, and it's just not gonna be as pretty. So when people are using it to sample your food, they're just not gonna be in the ideal, pristine condition that you originally found them in. And again, it's just all about the aesthetics. All these little details really come into play. And what's beautiful about this kit is you don't have to even think about it. It comes with its own utensils, so you don't have to worry about having to share anything with the kitchen, potentially losing it, damaging it, God knows what else. What else is nice about this kit is it's a collapsible kit. Not all of the Schaefer kits collapse. If you notice the frames themselves that hold the Schaefer dishes, they actually collapse and fold flat, which makes it a lot easier for you to transport them. We use this exact same kit. We've used it for years. I think we've got like nine or 12 of these setups by now, just because we've had to do some pretty big events where I needed more chafing trays and kits set up, and it just made sense to 
buy more of them instead of having to cycle things through faster. And they're great. I love them. Each one of the setups will come with two sterno holders. What's nice about the sterno holder is if you haven't done catering before, sterno is hard to blow out. So what's nice about the little sterno holders is not only are they aesthetically pleasing because it's the nice stainless steel, but they also have a little closer on it so you can close and kind of suffocate the flame and put it out that way instead of trying to blow it because sterno does not like to be blown out, and especially when they're hot, sometimes hard to get to. Those little holders with the handle on them make it a lot easier for your people and yourself to manipulate, use, turn off, do whatever you need to do while they're hot without burning yourself. Although I have to reiterate, the fact that these things fold flat and store so easily is really my favorite thing about these kits. Also having the serving utensils already included in the kit so you don't have to buy them separately, while you could, it's also a nice little thing to just have ready to go and know that it's already dedicated to the kit. Now, going from serving utensils to eating utensils, I love these little forks because not only are they kind of modern looking, the whole wooden thing, the recycled material is very in. They're very affordable. For a thousand of them, you're paying 50 bucks. The comments that we get on the forks, a lot of people like the forks. Depending on the food we're serving, we also try to get the pulp plates so that people can walk off with those. They appreciate the effort that you're making to be green. And like I said, it also helps you stand out. Everybody else, if they're demoing food, they're going to be using maybe toothpicks, but odds are they're going to be using some kind of a plastic fork or spork or something like that. If they've even thought to bring utensils, which sometimes they don't. So having these is great. Ideally, you'll be demoing some kind of product that could be like a finger food, so you don't even need the utensils. The fewer supplies you need and the less complicated you can make the entire experience, the better. But when the food you're sampling does require some eating utensils, I highly suggest getting these forks because, again, it just makes more of an impact, more of a differentiator, and it sets your quality up. People think green and healthy, all that stuff is kind of integrated, and a lot of people who are concerned about their health, a lot of them also are concerned about the environment, so they appreciate you going the extra mile and using something that is a lot easier to recycle and a lot more environmentally friendly. Now, as you can see, they also come in different designs. You can get the knife, you can get the spoon. Normally, we just use the forks. We don't really use any food that needs to be cut. We try not to. I cover that more in the video about food. And same thing with spoons. Try not to use too much food that would need those. So getting the forks is normally going to be good if you've thought of the food that you're going to be using. And again, I'll give you the tips on how to do that in the food video. Having it themed could be great, especially if you can get it to match your colors, but it's not necessary. That's a little bit overkill. We just go with the plain ones. Um, if you need to, you can also kind of use these. They're almost like a spork. So if you did have something that needed a spoon, this kind of kills two birds with one stone without you finding yourself in a situation where you have spoons and forks and you use more forks. So now you just have spoons, but now you need something that needs a fork and all you got is a spoon. This makes it a lot easier, which is why the spork was so ingenious to begin with, right? So now what are we gonna be putting all of this stuff in? Well, this is one of the bags that we've used. Here's a link to another bag that we use, and this is actually uh, two. I would suggest that you probably wanna invest in at least three of these because one of them I like to use just to put all of the event kit stuff in. So it won't have any food in it. It will just have all of your supplies. And then depending on how much food you're bringing, how many Schaefer trays and whatever else, you may need another bag, maybe even two or three extra bags just to carry the food. Now, what's great about them is they are insulated. So if you're using warm food or cold food, you are able to extend that life a bit. But if you're using warm, warm food, these tend to work a bit better than if you're using cold food. These things are just better at keeping things warm than they are at keeping things cold. So if you are going to an event and you've got trays of food that you need to keep cold, Make sure you have cold packs to stuff in there and keep everything at a safe temperature as well. As far as color recommendations, I would suggest going with black or darker color. We bought a bunch of blue ones, and the next time we make a purchase, I will probably just be buying black ones because there will inevitably be some stains and dirt and whatever else. And at the end of the day, these things aren't really going to be used to sell or make any kind of brand impressions. 99 times out of 100, these things are going to be hidden away under the table or elsewhere, so people won't even be able to see them. And to me, it would just be better to have a color that doesn't show stains or dirt as easy. It's inevitable. These things are going to be around food. They're going in and out of trunks and under tables and wherever else they're going to get dirty they're going to have some blemishes on them and to be throwing them in the washing machine every once in a while is kind of a pain when you can just get black and you're good to go now before we get into the most effective top secret weapon that we use at our event i do want to reiterate how important it is to have a checkoff list and the fact that these things aren't everything this probably isn't even half the stuff that we have on our checkoff list for the event kit and you can get a copy of the one that we use through the member portal or when you purchase the event Rockstar series, it'll be given to you as well. But make sure you do have a checkoff list because all of these things are important as well as the other things that I haven't mentioned. All of these things are super important and showing up without just one of them can completely ruin your experience and make your day a lot worse. That being said, let's get into the secret weapon. 
Events can open a ton of doors for your business if you know what you're doing, or they could end up slamming those same doors right in your face if you don't. We didn't become Florida's highest rated meal prep company without learning how to absolutely kill it at events. I've done 99% of our events and I can assure you that nobody lays a finger on the system that I've created. After years and countless events, I've finally taken all of my knowledge, all of my experience, all my mistakes, my tips, my secrets, and my tricks and put them into the Event Rockstar series. I break down everything so you and your employees have an easy to follow recipe to replicate our success. This is an amazing training resource from pre-event to post-event, from what we use to how we use it. So if you want to know what I do, how I do it, and why I do it so you can grow your business faster and easier, I invite you to click on the link or visit mealprepbiz101.com and check out the Event Rockstar series. I look forward to making you an event rock star and helping you grow as a business, as an entrepreneur, and as an individual. All right, let's finally get into my most favorite item, my most effective secret weapon in my entire arsenal, the prize wheel. Yes, I know, I know, you're thinking it's, it's a prize wheel. I've seen prize wheels before, there's nothing new about that. But have you seen prize wheels used the way I use prize wheels? No, at least I doubt it because I've been to plenty of events and while I have seen every once in a while someone's got the brains to actually use a prize wheel, they don't use them the way that I use them, I assure you. So there's a lot to cover, sharpen your pencils, let's dive right into it. Number one, I have brought up two prize wheels. There's gonna be a link to both of these. This is the tabletop version. This one's a little bit cheaper. And then this one could be both tabletop or stand-up. I like these because these are both, number one, the 24 inches. These are the big boys. You don't want the little baby prize wheels. That's just weak. I, I want something, the bigger the better. I want something I can see from across the room. I want you to stand out. You're gonna be at a health fair. Imagine you're at a health fair in this huge gymnasium or this major conference hall and there's just dozens and dozens of tables and all sorts of people. There might be multiple meal prep companies at this one event. You need to stand out. The bigger wheel that can be seen from across the room is going to help you stand out and attract people more effectively. We've had people walk up to our table and just spin the wheel, not even knowing that we have food or what the prizes are for. They just spin it because people are just programmed to just, oh, it's, I'm going to win something for free. They just walk up and you know, just spin it mindlessly as if they expect Bob Barker or Pat Sajak to jump out of nowhere and I'll ask them to buy a vowel or something. But they come up and they mindlessly spin this sucker, draws them into our table, and then once they see they've won something, now they're like, well, now I feel like I have something. It may, psychologically, they feel like they've got something, and now they, they, they're more inclined to feel like they need to spend that thing. They've got, they just won $25 off. $25 off what? Oh, you, what is this? You guys have food? Oh, you guys, has, you guys have free food? And it's delicious? And you're super personable and hopefully funny? I'll, I'll give you some great one-liners that absolutely kill it in some of the other videos. But you are going to have that opportunity now that they are on. You got a, a hook in the mouth. Now you can start reeling them in, right? Get them close to the table. This thing is a magnet. Now, another thing that's beautiful about this, I like this one in particular because it doesn't take up table real estate. This other one, we do have a, a smaller one that we use for some of the events where we know we're not going to have a lot of room. Like if they say you've got like a six by six location, okay, our table is going to be six feet wide. We're not going to be able to put anything outside of it. Okay, we'll put something on the table. Or if we know that we're not going to have a whole lot of people, not going to have a whole lot of food out, yeah, we'll sacrifice some table space for it. But even then, it's kind of a pain. I'd much rather have a little bit more space and put this off of the table, have it standing up so I'm able to maximize the amount of space that I'm using on the table and fully fit that with food and material and demo food and all the other fun stuff. Have this standing by itself, not taking up any of that real estate. As you can see, these are blank. You're going to take a Sharpie and you can write whatever you want on there. I like to do prizes from up to 50 bucks normally. We'll do like 50 bucks off and obviously that's going to be food credit. Now here's what's beautiful. You ask them, ideally you wanna get their information before they spin the wheel. Why? Because if they get a, a BS prize, they're not going to be as likely to give you their information. If you give them, you know, one of the, the lower prizes, let's say they win, you know, 10 bucks off or something, they're not going to be as inclined to give you their information if they're just like, ah, 10 bucks, ah, whatever. But when they won 50 bucks, they're going to be giving you their information. However, if you have their contact information beforehand and they're thinking they're about to win that 50 bucks or whatever you want the grand prize to be they're going to give you that contact information then the last column on the contact sheet or the last field on the form is going to be the prize that they won you let them spin you write down whatever the prize is bada bing bada boom you've already got the contact information that's what you're there for right then you engage them you start giving them the elevator pitch and everything else and i cover that more in another video but again focusing specifically on this wheel the efficacy of you being able to draw people in and get their contact information will go up probably three or four fold just by implementing this prize wheel the right way
Now, some more secret weapons that I use specifically with this prize wheel. I will put in some of the triangles, the prize will be free high five. And people will land on that and they're like, what, what's free high five? And then you sit there, give them a high five, everybody laughs, and then you let them spin again. Because at first they're like, oh, it's just a high five. Like, oh, that's kind of funny. And you're like, go ahead, spin again. We're just messing with you. That allows you to introduce some humor, some levity. And I guarantee if you're the only table that's able to make them laugh that entire time, that will help you set yourself apart. It'll be a major differentiator. And if you're able to weave humor into the entire brand tone, it will set a precedence. It will set that entire feeling of what they can be experiencing throughout their membership with your company. Now, what's great about having it as a dry erase marker is you're able to change the prizes on the fly if you want to, depending upon what you've got in your arsenal. Maybe you forgot to bring the free t-shirts or lanyards or whatever else. You can erase that and change that to a free meal or free snack, free dessert, whatever you want it to be. Now, you can have some prizes that you have with you that you can give to them right away, but a lot of times what you want to do is say, Give me your contact information, then you spin the wheel, and then we will use your text or your email to send you the coupon or whatever it's gonna be, the credit for whatever your prize is gonna be. So when they see 50 bucks on there, they're like, okay, I just gotta put down my email and my cell phone so they can text me a coupon, no problem. I want my 50 bucks. So now you're officially armed with all of the most effective weapons in our event arsenal. What are you going to do with them? How are you going to get the most opportunities to use them? And how are you going to most effectively use them? That is going to be covered in the subsequent videos. So again, I invite you to check out the rest of the series. You should be able to click on a link that's popping up on the screen. If not, there's definitely going to be some links in the show notes, or you could just venture on over to mealprepbiz101.com, where along with this, you're going to find a ton of other resources and information and content and tools that will help you make your meal prep business more successful, more profitable, faster, and easier.